This is the story behind the song, my song. In this episode, we're talking about my song, God's Got a Plan for You. I was in my 20s and a young believer in Christ. I went to a small non-denominational church and attended a weekly home group Bible study. The people that attended the Bible study meeting were my pastor and his wife, the host family, and a couple other families, everyone coming from different parts of St. Louis and across the river from Illinois to get together for fellowship and studying God's Word together. As the only young single person in the group, I really looked up to the families that I met with there. One of those families had a daughter close to my age that I hadn't met yet that we prayed for every week. I listened to the mother and father pour out their hearts to God for their unsaved daughter, Christina. I met Christina about a year later at a church get-together at the family's house in Illinois. She and I made friends over a friendly game of ping pong that day. I told her how much I respected and appreciated her parents. I told her that we were praying for her and her salvation. I didn't push the subject too hard. I only intended to let her know that she was cared for and that prayers were being lifted on her behalf. I'm not sure what happened in her life, but within the next two or three weeks, she had gotten saved and she started coming to the same home group Bible study with her parents. I've always wondered if our conversation that day we met played a part in her coming to Christ. Around the same time that she started coming to our Bible study, I had heard about an organization that ran sports-based mission trips. They were looking for athletes for baseball, soccer, and other sports to go to the Soviet Union to compete and to present the gospel. This was something that I really wanted to do. I loved soccer and I loved Jesus. I saw it as an opportunity for the two loves in my life to come together for the same purpose. I would need an endorsement for my soccer coach and an endorsement for my pastor. I figured the endorsement for my pastor was pretty certain since we were such a small, tight-knit little church and they loved me so much. But getting a soccer coach was a little more difficult. I didn't play high school soccer. I only half-heartedly tried out one year. When I was in junior high, I attended some soccer camps that were run by one of the players from St. Louis's professional team at the time. Years after going to those soccer camps, that player would still call me by name when I would see him at the games. One time, he even called out to me when I walked past him without realizing it was him. This professional soccer player was forced to early retirement from playing due to injuries, and he started coaching the same team he had played for. Even though he was coaching and not playing anymore, he still ran the same soccer camp that I attended years before. So I tracked down where his camp was being held, and I went to see him. I met with him for about an hour, showing him all the brochures for the sports mission trip, and asked for his endorsement. Even though he didn't understand everything from the theological perspective, he understood the soccer part, and he agreed to endorse me as my coach. I gave my pastor the information about the mission trip for him to look over. While I waited for him to get back to me with his endorsement, I started making mental notes of what I would need to pack on my trip. The following week at the home group Bible study, my pastor declined to endorse me. He wasn't real big on discretion, and he told me this in front of whoever happened to be listening. I didn't realize it, but my friend Christina, the daughter of the family from Illinois, was standing by and heard the whole conversation. The pastor told me he could not endorse me for the sports mission trip I wanted to go on, but that there was this other mission trip that was run by the parent church organization that he could send me on. He tried to sell me on the idea by telling me, you'd get to stay in a castle in Austria and eat goat cheese. I told him I wasn't interested in that. And as soon as I said that, Christina jumps in and says, that sounds interesting to me. A few weeks later, Christina was in Austria staying in a castle and eating goat cheese. I wrote the lyrics that God's got a plan for you for her to encourage her on that trip. My friend Dave wrote the music and sang on the demo that I sent to her all the way in Austria. She wrote me a letter thanking me and telling me that she played the song for everyone that was serving with her there. Fast forward to the present now. A couple years ago, my sister-in-law went on a mission trip with her church, and at the same time, my best friend's daughters were venturing out on mission trips as well. They all inspired me to re-record this song. Even if you're not serving on a mission trip somewhere, know that the message is still true for you. God's got a plan for you.
his hands, taking a giant leap of faith, trusting in the master's plan. Watching as his dreams come true, it is plain to see God's got a plan for you. God's got a plan for you. Like a tree that in water fruit began to show. God's got a plan for you. God's got a plan for you.